The King of the Battlefield Chapter 121 Chapter 121, The Duke, Bastro, 3 T.L., Nadu Editor, Lee Suras I didn't have a proper defense skill so this is good. There were definitely things which he couldn't take care of with just equipment. On top, after Mweung reached his second metamorphosis, most of his skills were fixed to be above B rank. He was talking about all other skills besides the ones given by the Masters of the Darkness. You could definitely call that a blessing. Just by learning them, they all became B rank skills unconditionally. Even in the past, not many had this. Unless they had crazily high intelligence like Queen of Frostwind, Kim Hanna. Intelligence is related to skill proficiency. Just because it was high, didn't mean someone got smarter. Instead, it became easier for someone to use their skills and it helped in raising their proficiency. You could say that it allowed people to read the skills structure itself. Occasionally, it allowed people to entirely remove the repelling power that skills had. Fortunately, Mweung's intelligence wasn't on the low side. However, you couldn't say that it was on the high side either. A value that wasn't even 300. It was hard to say if he had the intelligence to maintain a skill higher than AB rank. Through this opportunity, I might be able to learn a bunch of skills. Mweung thought of it optimistically. By killing devils with noble status, he could earn crystallization. By gaining all of their skills like this, he could be able to complement parts that he felt slightly lacking. At least, there was nothing to lose by learning them. Of course, by learning the skills once, you couldn't get rid of them easily. There was also a possibility for it to become a matter of eternal regret if he was to learn a wrong skill. However, something like regret couldn't be possible for Mweung. The numerous experience and information he piled up for 40 years. It was because those times weren't just wasted. The present after returning from the future, there was no one else who spent as much time as Mweung in this place, the underworld. Likewise. Achievement Effect Devil Hunter, B++, the chance to earn a crystallization after hunting a devil increases. Mweung nodded his head. When someone hunts, there should rightly be something left. It was an effect worthy for a hunter. Are you going to join forces with the Fire Tars? B. Sungmin asked. Although he died and became a lich, like a lich, he also had some of his intelligence left. Every now and then, he made suggestions like this. However, Mweung shook his head. Joining them comes later. Even if he tried to join forces with the Fire Tars, it was doubtful whether they would accept Mweung. No, it was more likely for them to not accept it. He couldn't think all Fire Tars were like Augur. However, to fight against Duke Bastro and his close to 10,000 devil soldiers, the Fire Tars' help was essential. So, even if they didn't want to, it was best to make them cooperate. We will cut the enemy's supply route. Devils also needed to eat to survive. Although he said supply route, it was just them hunting monsters and drinking water from a lake. What would happen if those disappeared? Furthermore, the devils were currently excited as they were influenced by the Red Moon. Even if this is to the extreme, it should be that much of an effective solution. This was one of the tactics he created to manage Devil's Long Night. Since cutting the supply route in a battle was the basic among basics, there were some parts that were in common. On top, Fire Tars could live for a long period of time without eating. Even the Dokibus and other species could live off the food supplies they stored for a few months. The one who is more in a hurry loses the battle. Since there was no better or easier place to assassinate someone than during a battle, it should be very rare to find someone with more battle experience than Weung. And after watching numerous battles, he made one conclusion. The more of a hurry you are in, the more mistakes you will make. A small error would greatly help to produce an irrevocable result. So, Mweung was planning to steadily suffocate his enemy. Mweung's gaze deeply sunk. The fire tars gathered in a place near a pum tree. The fire tars were a type of species that were unable to live without a pum tree that gives them a sense of stability. 
it was an obvious reason. If not, they would be eaten up by the flames they produced themselves. And Bastro and Devil soldiers were threatening the Pum tree. Even the fire tars that were hostile towards each other joined forces for this occasion. Vice Chieftain Augur, has the Great Chieftain not made a decision yet? And so, those fire tars that gathered were a surprising number of 800. The five fire tribes gathered. Compared to the devils, the numbers were quite small but their strength could definitely not be ignored. As they were all, one by one, a top predator. And as a chieftain who ruled over one of the five tribes asked Augur, Augur silently just shook his head. For our victory, the chieftain is still thinking. Don't we just need to crush the devils? That's how the sharp-edged feather tribe was annihilated. Did you forget already? A fire tar's enemy is only a fire tar. They were in sharp disagreement. The fire tars were strong. Even humans and devils tried to avoid the fire tars. However, they didn't just avoid them because they were afraid. It was because nothing could be earned from meddling with the fire tars. Basically, the fire tars only lived near a pum tree and the pum trees were normally apparent near the outskirts where the devil's influences were low. There was no reason for others to meddle with them if they could save so much more time by going around a bit. Of course, you couldn't say they weren't scared at all of the fire tars counterattack. There is no answer like this. Augur inwardly let out a deep sigh. Even when he looked at it, the fire tars were too arrogant. Without wanting to advance, they were just stagnant. A fire tar's only enemy is a fire tar? Ha, huh, they could only be helpless at invasions because they say stuff like this. They couldn't properly face the reality as it was. They didn't know a thing about what was going on in their surroundings. How could they if they kept their eyes and ears shut themselves? It was also the result of them living in one territory for a long time. There weren't real enemies and so they stagnated. In that sense, Muyung, was a better man. It was surprising how fast he was getting stronger each day. He was also fearless in taking up challenges. He seemed somewhat crude but his mentality itself was extremely great. Because he had that sort of mentality, Augur was drawn to Muyung. On the other hand, how were the fire tars? The devils are no match for us. We just need to bring one warrior for every hundred devil soldiers. Simple. It's obvious that the great chieftain gets easily scared in his old age. In the past, chieftain truly made everyone shudder by moving numerous territories. They didn't know. The great chieftain gained insight as he aged. He realized that it wasn't everything to just thoughtlessly face a problem. Among the fire tars, only the great chieftain knew how to win most effectively. Thump. Afterwards, everyone turned their eyes to the pum tree. As if he was bonding, the great chieftain who sat near the pum tree and was lost in his thoughts finally moved. A physique that was 1.5 times bigger than other fire tars. He had an X mark scar on his forehead and hair that were burning furiously. He slowly opened his mouth. We will leave the pum tree. The pum tree. Nonsense. Of course there was a strong resistance. The pum tree was like the fire tar's mother. For them, it was a sacred place. Even if they were to leave it, it was hard to promise that they would find another pum tree. If we were to get our hands tied to this place, we will lose. However, the great chieftain was firm in his opinion. It was the conclusion he made after considering the enemy's size and number. If they were to fight in a limited area near the pum tree, the fire tars could never win against the devils. Are you scared? Great chieftain. I'm disappointed. For you to desert the pum tree for mere devils. Shut up. Blah is. The blood that dripped from his clenched fist instantly burned in flames and evaporated. Everyone tightly closed their lips. Overwhelming. He had the vigor to rule over everything in his surroundings. They once again remembered the legend of how the great chieftain made everyone shudder by moving numerous territories. You guys don't know the terror of the devils. He slowly rubbed the X mark scar on his forehead. It was the only scar on the great chieftain's body. 
Oris, he played with me as if I was a toy. He spoke the demon god's name. He ground his teeth. He also knew of the Bastro who invaded his territory right now. And because of this, he made the critical decision to leave the Pum tree. At the same time, everyone couldn't help but be surprised. The great chieftain was a living legend to them. Their confidence level about their fire tar origin shot through the roof. Secretly, the fire tars thought that they could face against demon kings and demon gods when they worked together. But, for that scar to be from a demon god. It was the first time Augur heard of this as well. If the current devil soldiers were led by Bastro, they are even a match for me. But, is there anyone here who can be a match for me? Only silence filled the surroundings. Of course, there were no fire tars who could be a match for the great chieftain. The great chieftain turned his body as everyone became quiet. If we get our hands tied here, it's impossible to even win. However, we aren't running away. We are going to move a bit wider and crush Bastro. The great chieftain showed strong will. Unless a miracle happened, there was no way for them to win right now against them. And he wasn't that thick head to rely on a miracle. Just, he waited for the opportunity. The 800 fire tars were overwhelmed by just the great chieftain. In the end, everyone started to move and leave the pum tree. To move two steps forward they moved back a step. Mweung. Augur looked in the direction where Mweung and his territory was located. The fire tars left at once. During that time, he didn't know what the devils would do. If Mweung was caught by the devil soldiers, it would hard for him to fight against them with just the strength he had. However, at this current situation, there was nothing Augur could do to help. Unless something changed the situation. But, no matter how hard he thought about it, a plan to overcome this situation didn't come to him. They burned the forest. They dried up the water and got rid of everything that could become a food source. Five thousand soldiers were divided into fifty units and each acted uniformly. They killed every monster and burned their flesh to ashes or buried them deep in the ground. They were planning to remove everything the devil soldiers could eat up within their active radius. I think the devils have noticed. Aaron spoke. This also was within his predictions. He couldn't avoid the eyes of ten thousand devil soldiers. It seemed like cutting off their food supply was effective but the devil soldiers are extremely agitated. If we don't quickly evacuate, there won't be anyone left from the five thousand soldiers. Aaron spoke as if he was in a hurry. Mweung gently closed his eyes. There was an effect. Now, the devil soldiers will move to defend themselves. He was divided on if they should fight or not. However, with their fighting power, they weren't a match. Still, if there was anything they were more exceptional than the devils at, it was their delivery of information. The uniformed operation system which Mweung personally made, operated, and built. He needed to use it to the max. It was basics to use favorable points to the max to face an unfavorable situation. It's the way for the weak to win against the strong. He wasn't well versed in strategies and tactics but he had some knowledge. He witnessed numerous battles with his own two eyes and he also saw that many turnarounds. There were even a few heroes who won a fight that was never winnable. Mweung thought of their moves. Fighting them is the worst move. It was no different than suicide. However, it wasn't like there was no way for the weak to fight against a strong opponent. First, with the finished system, he was going to delay as much as he could and start a speed match. Fighting at a place he wanted and putting his enemy off their guard. The main gist was making them feel as if they could win but not letting them. An opportunity would definitely come if he made them as impatient as he could. Mweung opened his eyes. Don't retreat and set up a stronghold. I will lure the enemy. Chapter 121, The Duke, Bastro, 4. TL, Nadu. Editor, Lee Suras. Sponsored by, Anonymous. There were five nobles under Duke Bastro's command. Baron Alleman, Baron Arthur, Baron Isolana, Baron Swing, and Count Argon. Why isn't Alleman returning? 
As Aliman, who went to reconnaissance, didn't return even after a lot of time had passed, Bastro raised a question. But, no one could answer him. It was because no one had seen Aliman. Was he killed? Bastro felt strange. Only the fire tars could be their match in this territory. However, didn't the fire tars leave even the pum tree and run away? There would have been no time for them to get rid of Aliman. And in reality, the place they were currently occupying was very close to the pum tree. Blasi! The pum tree was burning. The tree that was vital in maintaining their life and the one that the fire tars respected as their mother. It was a story that had nothing to do with Bastro. They just burned it as it was an eyesore. Arthur, take a look around the location where Aliman went to reconnaissance. If there is anything strange, report to me immediately. I'll leave immediately. Baron Arthur went into battle leading 5,000 soldiers. Bastro's eyes shined as he watched him. I don't know who is disturbing us. The third party Bastro missed. He didn't know how big the size was or how strong they were but it was true that he was interested. It seemed like they wanted the devils to wither away by burning the forest, burying the lake, and taking away all life around them but the uniformed movement was out of the ordinary. It meant that the actions were through one system of command. It meant that there was someone who reigned as a king in the Fire Tars territory. How could he not be interested? I hope he isn't a coward like the Fire Tars. Honestly, he couldn't repress his disappointment for leaving the Pum Tree and running away. However, he hoped that the newly appeared enemy would be different. Ni. Bastro kicked the side of the horse he was riding on. It looked similar to the Hell Horse but was a horned white horse. The unicorn cried softly. Baron Arthur started to reconnaissance the area that Alamon disappeared around with his 5,000 soldiers. It must be here. Not soon after, he found a castle in the outskirts. And nearby it, the equipment of all kinds of devil soldiers weren't organized and were all over the place. It seemed like this was the place where Alamon was killed. Fool! Arthur clicked his tongue. Alamon was the type of guy who rushed headlong without thinking. As he was influenced by the Red Moon, it seemed like his actions became more reckless. I will revenge for you still. Arthur was different. However, Arthur was also influenced by the Red Moon. Under the pretext of revenge, he gave his order. Destroy the castle gate and the castle walls. I will drag out the guys inside. A huge 5M tall devil soldier was the first to act and ran his body into the gate. Crash! The gate greatly shook. A few devils spread their wings wide. Whoosh! Stab! Dozens of arrows flew out from the inside of the castle. The few devils who were in the sky were shot down by the arrows. Stone flew from siege equipment towards the devil camp. However, the numbers were small. It wasn't greatly effective. Afterwards, the devil soldiers with their wings spread wide flew over the wall with their spears ready. Crash! Soon, the gate also collapsed. Arthur took out his sword. Soon, his authority, Payne's perspiration was activated. Clang! A chill colder than frost circled his sword. The sword became frozen and even the vapor that touched the sword instantly fell to the ground as ice an unending drip of cold. Truly, the ability to freeze everything it touched. Arthur and his 5,000 devil soldiers entered the castle without much resistance. There is no enemy. Arthur tilted his head. Even the enemies who shot the arrows disappeared without a trace. Did they run off? However, if he wasn't influenced by the Red Moon, he would have thought something was strange. It was definitely strange for those enemies who killed Alamon to give away their castle with resisting this much. However, Arthur was excited. They entered the castle without any suspicion and that produced an irrevocable mistake. Klong. Pooosh. The explosions occurred from all around. You are trying to bury the whole castle. Arthur's eyes widened. He then realized what he had done. However, the devil soldiers and Arthur couldn't be threatened with just normal explosions. However, 
the explosions that were currently happening were out of the ordinary. Holy power that was extremely hazardous to devils was also included and it had the fire power that could even melt the skin of a dragon. If they were a bit careful, they wouldn't have suffered but they were already a step too late. Everyone leave the castle. Arthur turned his head. However, it wasn't easy to once again cross the castle gate. A barricade. Why was the barricade on the opposite side? A barricade that was normally supposed to protect the castle wall was on the opposite side and was inside the castle walls. For it to be free for them to come in but for it to be impossible for them to leave. From the beginning, their enemy's goal was to lure them into the castle. Arrows and siege weapons flew out. That meant that they were inside. It wasn't hard to destroy that invisible barrier. But, in the current situation, it was hard for Arthur, requiring time the explosions weren't giving them. Once again, he turned his direction. By looking near the location where the arrows flew out, there must be at least one path that leads out. Ting! Swoosh! This also betrayed Arthur's expectations. There were crossbows and sieges that automatically shot out. In the end, he wandered back and forth before he lost even his last chance. Crash! As if they waited for him, everything exploded in Arthur's surroundings. A. Mwiyong watched the scene from afar. Although the castle was buried, he had no signs of regret. Even though it was lacking compared to the original Demon Dragon lethal cannon, it's effective as it was mixed with holy power. They tried to recreate the cannonball of the Demon Dragon lethal cannon which killed the Dark Dragon in one shot, but the fire power itself was a bit lacking. However, Bi Sungmin's holy power was added and used as an extreme counter to the devils. Thanks to it, Mwiyong was able to annihilate all 5,000 devil soldiers. I can just build a new castle. Mwiyong turned around and spoke to those who looked at the buried castle with sorrow in their eyes. With the help of the dwarves, they could reconstruct the castle in a few months. However, he needed to avoid being defeated. Soon, Mwiyong approached the buried castle. As he looked around, a crystallization that shined brightly caught his eyes. Unlike Alamin's crystallization, it was filled with chills. Although he just grabbed it with his hand, it felt like his fingers were going to freeze. Gulp. However, Mwiyong gulped it without delay. Then, his whole body shivered. Name, Pain's Perspiration. Effect, An extreme chill is placed onto a weapon. Asterisk it freezes everything touched by the weapon. Asterisk be careful, as it could even freeze you. Creak. Ice covered all around anguish. As he lightly shook, the moisture in its surroundings froze. After seeing ice powder fluttering like particles, Mwiyong nodded his head. Nice. You might think it was just a freezing skill but it was on another level compared to the ice-type skills used by wizards. Would it be called an authority for no reason? With just this authority, Arthur gained the title of Baron. Its strength didn't lack compared to top-rank ice-type skills like Blizzard or Ice Dragon's Breath. The crystallizations are appearing more frequently than I expected. Two crystallizations appeared after killing two barons. It was too lucky even considering the effects of the Devil Hunter title. Since approximately with calculations, you needed to kill at least 20 nobles to earn just one crystallization. I'll return to the built stronghold. After confirming that all of the devils became ashes, he turned his body. He could only use this move once not having a spare castle to booby trap. However, it was certainly effective. The wind has changed. If there was no miracle, he was going to create it. Mwiyong thought of numerous ways to overcome the current situation. Alamin and Arthur were dead. When Bastro sent more soldiers after feeling strange, there was only a collapsed castle. They were killed. Indeed, as he lost two in a row, it didn't feel all that good. Through this, he was able to confirm that his enemy was formidable but it was the truth that he looked down on his enemy. If I was to refuse a provoked fight, I, Bastro, cannot be considered a warrior. About 100,000 soldiers were reduced to 90,000 already. 
you could say it was only one-tenth of his army, but he gave it up too easily. Alana. Swing. I'll give you guys twenty thousand soldiers each. Find them and kill them cruelly. Even if two thousand or five thousand didn't work, it would be hard with ten thousand. However, with forty thousand devil soldiers, they could destroy even the huge castle of humans. He didn't believe the current apparent enemy could also face 40,000 devil soldiers as well. Looking at the appearance of the monsters that were part of the fight, they were very lousy. Dokibas, dwarves, and elves, they are all insignificant creatures. The ones who have a limit from birth. Unless they were extremely rare species like the high elves or rune dwarves, they couldn't have dared to fight with the devils. If they were to lose now, it would also be a humiliation. He couldn't suffer that sort of humiliation. I will present you the enemy's head. For Bastro's glory. Then, the rest of the two barons left with 40,000 soldiers. Baroness Elena and Baron Swing also didn't think they would ever lose. Muyong chose Gorilla. With speed battle as his lead, he killed off his enemies little by little. He used the advantage of the topography, made detours, and encamped as he followed the ways for the weak to win against the strong like a textbook. Here, Bi Sung Min made a big impact. As an arc lich, he was able to use magic and holy powers at the same time and even if it was a lich it was still extremely dangerous to a devil, therefore there were lots of use for him. This rat-like bastard. Those were her last words. Swoosh. Baroness Alana's body was frozen solid. It was because Muyung's sword penetrated Alana's center. Three in a row. As he killed nobles, he continuously earned crystallizations. Of course, it wasn't bad to earn them. The crystallization was the devil's strength itself. As he ate more and more, he got stronger. Clang. Clong. As Alana was killed, the offshore devil soldiers made a frantic last-ditch effort. Muyong also used all his military strength. The progress of the battle was a tie. The situation couldn't be helped. As one low-level devil soldier was a match to three Dokibas. They were fighting well thanks to them draining the devil soldier's strength in advance. Even if they were to win, they wouldn't be able to avoid a great loss. Thump. Thump. It was at that moment. From afar, giants of fire approached them. Mwiong. It was Augur and about a hundred fire tars. As Augur was glad to see him, he called Mwiong's name as he threw devil soldiers aside. No matter if they were devil soldiers, unless they were nobles, they couldn't easily be an opponent to Augur. But, he wasn't the only one. A big fire tar, the great chieftain stood out among them. Even the excited devil soldiers couldn't approach him easily. It felt like there was an invisible wall that was activated around him. They finally came. After looking at them, a small arc was drawn with Muyong's lips. Chapter 123, The Duke, Bastro, and T.L., Nadu. Editor, Lee Suras. Sponsored by, Anonymous and Matthew C. The Great Chieftain. Augur, and a hundred other fire tars. It was a smaller number than he had expected but it was enough to overcome this current situation. Haha. <laughs> you are truly one heck of a guy. I never expected you to make it this far. Augur continued to swing his huge spear with a smiling face. It was a smile that didn't fit at all on a battlefield where blood and pieces of flesh were splashed across the ground, but it was proof that he was so happy that he couldn't contain it since even what he was unsure about had become reality. A few hundred fire tars abandoned and left the pum tree. A plan to fall back. Although he comforted himself that he took a step back to move two steps forward, in the end, it was no different than fleeing to avoid the devils. He looked for an opening and an opportunity to attack but no one knew how long they would need to retreat. But. The tables have turned. Muyong had turned the tables. Those devils that were known as nobles were continuously hunted. It was a move no one had expected. No one had anticipated from Muyong. It was an obvious thing if they thought about the first time Muyong had appeared. 
even though he did solve the problem regarding the Pum tree, Muyong's strength itself was lacking a lot compared to the fire tars. But now. Swoosh. Baroness Elena fluttered as she became ashes. He killed off devils with noble titles all on his own. Not just that. Um has killed the leader of the enemy. Push more. He also made it possible for the few ten thousand soldiers to follow him. This all happened in just one year. Even the great chieftain changed his mind because of this. Although, I haven't seen him yield before. If Muyong didn't send the Ark Lich, B. Sungmin, they wouldn't have known about the fact that they were struggling. However, not everyone easily believed him and in the end, only the great chieftain, Vice Chieftain Augur, and their tribe members arrived at this place. But, if he was to obtain the desired results, he believed it could change everyone's mind. It wasn't like they could just leave the devils who burned the Pum tree be. Even the great chieftain would have allowed them to help Muyong after seeing how they had a chance. In reality, the great chieftain's eyes constantly looked at Muyong. He is an amazing person. Please look at his face until you are satisfied. Because Augur felt that the person he acknowledged was also being acknowledged by the great chieftain, a strange palpitation occurred in his heart. Someone who wasn't acknowledged by anyone was acknowledged by the great chieftain. And Muyong was worthy to be acknowledged. Someone who might even surpass the great chieftain before long. Maybe someone who could change this world like he did right now, that sort of person. You're late. It was what Muyong said as Augur made his way through numerous devil soldiers and reached the place Muyong was at. Augur smirked. You're cold as always. Let's talk after we end this fight. Muyong's face showed how tired he was. Although they said it was a guerrilla operation, they fought for a total of 14 days endlessly. They were days when he couldn't sleep properly as he needed to look over every situation and give orders as a lord, and a commander. If it wasn't for his superhuman mentality, he would have already passed out. This sort of rigorous schedule was possible because the person at the center of all this was Muyong. Augur inwardly clicked his tongue but he still understood. It was better than being sent away. It wasn't as easy by looking at the current situation. Okay, I'll run wild. Slash. Augur's spear slit the ground. Harmony's crystallization. It was the item he earned by killing Baroness Elena. After the fight ended, Muyong quickly swallowed it. A combination skill. Muyong nodded his head. If he used a skill related to combination well, it could produce a much greater effect than it states. Of course, if not used properly, it could also produce no real results but as he didn't have any skills related to this, it was that much closer to being an advantage to him. Aren't you afraid of turning into a devil? The great chieftain who was watching him from a close range spoke. The great chieftain. It was also the first time Weyong had seen him this close. However, unlike before, there was no shiver. Before when he watched the great chieftain from afar, he instinctively shivered because he felt the difference in their level. However, now there was only a small distance between them, he didn't feel a difference between their level. It meant that he caught up. Even if you take a devil's strength, you don't become one. Muyong answered calmly. In the past, it was a rumor that went around before Muyong returned in time. That you might become a devil yourself if you continuously ingest the crystallization you earned by killing devils with a noble title. There was a story of such. It wasn't a conclusion. It was something the devil killer, the one who killed the most devils and ingested 50 crystallizations, declared. Of course, 50 crystallizations might not be enough but it was like a miracle itself to collect 50 crystallization. You will become something more devilish than a devil. In the past, there was that sort of guy. As Muyong glanced quizzically at the great chieftain, the great chieftain shook his head. Anyways, I have watched your active part in this battle. Within this much military power, you successfully fought back against the devils. A battle isn't simply a fight of strength. A battle can be fought by a hundred or a thousand men. Besides the times when there is overpowering power, 
the point is tactics and strategies. How well you manage the colliding strength of numerous troops. Fortunately, Muyong didn't seem like he didn't have any talent. You're right, strength isn't everything. However, there are five noble devils that came with Bastro. How many did you fight alone? Two. Two? Amazing. However, even the great chieftain wasn't able to fully grasp the current situation of their battle. If Muyong killed two and tens of thousands of soldiers, it was truly possible. You could say just by that, he did all his work. However, Muyong shook his head and stretched two fingers. Two are left. Bara and Swing and Count Argon. I can see why Bastro is in a hurry. Regarding this, even the great chieftain seemed a bit surprised. It couldn't be helped. Muyong's troops that currently surrounded him, the setup itself was shabby, totally beyond description. With these troops, how could he kill three noble devils? It wasn't an easy task for anyone. Is this all of the fire tars? I thought at least five hundred would gather. Muyong spoke as he knitted his brows. An extremely rude manner in front of the great chieftain. In reality, other fire tars tried to backlash but the great chieftain stopped them as he stretched out his hand. Since we figured out the noble devils were continuously killed, everyone would gather. Then it would be fine to continue the battle. Mine and your soldiers need to rest. If not now it would be many times harder to kill Baron Swing. This is the right time. Muyong urged with perseverance. Baron Isolana and Baron Swing had left for battle with 20,000 soldiers each. Although he had killed Baron Isolana, guerrilla warfare was also applied to Swing as well. If not now when the devil soldiers were weak, it was possible for all the devils to gather. The fight would become several times harder. Muyong's eyes faced the great chieftain. A look without an inch of hesitation. It might have seemed defiant but you couldn't say this wasn't the eyes of a warrior either. Rather this look actually pleased the great chieftain. Good. Our tribe will help. Thanks. Muyong expressed his gratitude shortly before he quickly started to move. One hundred fire tars including the great chieftain and Augur, it wasn't impossible to kill twenty thousand devil soldiers that lost their strength. Count Argon spoke to Bastro. Bastro, Lady Elena, and Lord Swing aren't returning. Among 40,000 soldiers, not one came to bring any news. Even if they were in a hurry to reconnoiter, they should have chosen an informant and sent word. If not, it was normal for them to use magic to communicate. But, there was nothing. There was only one reason for this sort of case. Annihilation. They said the fire tars have reappeared. Maybe it has something to do with them. Gruyet? Bastro ground his teeth. In total, about half of his troops disappeared without properly fighting. He couldn't just watch any longer. Neg. Bastro kicked the side of the unicorn. I need to see it with my own eyes who the hell he is. Afterwards, with a big frown on his face, Bastro spoke. All troops, head to war. Muyong was also reading the movements of the devils that left the Pum tree. Muyong, what are you going to do? Augur asked. By even getting rid of Swing, Muyong had become a commander who could be trusted on. Muyong turned his head and looked around. In total, well over 700 fire tars and the 10,000 troops Muyong had were gathered. Normally, it was normal to watch the situation but he had a chance for total victory. Spirit was something you should never look down on. Just by being absorbed in the happiness of their successes and charging towards their final victory could produce great strength. If they were to hold back for a moment, it was possible to lose that spirit. Do or die. What does that mean? Stake everything on one fight. Since the devils will no longer be fooled by the fight by the number. Bastro would have felt strange. On top, judging by the path of his movement, it was extremely cautious. It might seem as Muyong was at an advantage if he was to battle against time, but that wasn't really true. Burning the forest and removing their food supply was no more than to induce Bastro to be impatient so that he would make mistakes. 
if they were to go for a protracted war, Mwiyong and the troops wouldn't survive. So, it was Sydney or the bush. Just, Mwiyong had the authority to choose the terrain. Augur, I need your help. Speak, whatever you need. If it is something I can do, I will do it all. Augur was born in this territory. He should be well aware of the surrounding topography. On the other hand, there should be a limit with Bastro. It was the difference between a native and a foreigner who just arrived. I will definitely win. Although he said Sydney or the bush, Mwiyong wasn't planning to lose. Bastro and 50,000 devil soldiers approached a location where both sides were cliffs. It was because they found out that the troops of their enemy were gathered somewhere around this place. Needless to say, it probably is a trap. He had a strong feeling that he was being induced. Bastro sent out scouts to look around the place. And he went back to make a detour towards a path that wasn't between cliffs. It was because he had no reason to fight in a terrain where he was at a disadvantage. However, Mwiyong also knew that Bastro would avoid the location. He turned around. But, he was one step behind. Crank. Crash. A rift was created on the ground. Dwarves had dug up the ground and placed explosives in the path where they had to head back. Fuyuayok. At the same place where the explosion occurred, water gushed. They had disturbed the groundwater. He got me. Bastro frowned deeply. Even though it hadn't affected his life, his movements were restricted as the ground was dug up. As if they were waiting for this moment, fire tars and ten thousand soldiers were approaching from afar. You bastard! Do you think you can stop me with this shallow move? Bastro soared up into the air as he rode the unicorn. Numerous devils also spread their wings. In reality, only a few devil soldiers died. However, Mwiyong simply made a smile. It seems like they can't see their wings corroding. Sizzle. The widely spread wings slowly burned. The effects were minimal but it was enough to affect their flight. And B. Sungman, the Arc Lich, was continuously repeating spells beside Mwiyong. Although it isn't holy water, it is water affected by holy powers. It's quite effective against low-level devils. It wasn't easy to add holy power to the groundwater. It was only effective against low-level devils. It was also only effective to the weak part of their skin, the wings. However, considering how most of the devil soldiers were low-level devils, he felt that it would produce a result much greater than he expected. Bayostard. Bastro screamed out loud with his neck veins bulging. Chapter 124, Gremory, 1. T.L., T. Editor. Lee Suris. Instinctively, he recognized Mwiyong as the main culprit behind all this. The main culprit whose enormous influence was behind the elimination of the four nobles under his command and the massacre of over 50,000 devil soldiers. As if that wasn't enough, Bastro was caught in a trap. Now that he was under the influence of the Red Moon, Bastro's rage was reaching the extreme. Rib. Ryib. The muscles of his body expanded and increased in size. A mist similar to a heat shimmer formed around him. After a while, the fog merged together and reproduced Bastro's figure. A clone. A total of six clones were created. Soon after, the completed clones began to move and rampaged through the surroundings. However, only their physical features were identical, but their equipment varied. For example, the person presumed to be the main body was riding a unicorn, while the remaining six weren't mounted. Their weapons and armor were different. So that's his authority. Each of the clones had as much power as the main body. Mwiyong's soldiers could not even resist. That literally meant they had to deal with the seven bastros. If these were regular clones, one might think he would just need to kill the main body mounted on the unicorn but... All seven are both a clone and the real Bastro. Mwiyong read the grains of all seven of them. And the grains were all the same. If the main body was to die one of the remaining clones would become the main body again. Its authority was as such. Indeed, 
the authority of someone who'd become more or less a duke wasn't ordinary. I'll handle Bastro. You and Augur deal with the rest. The great chieftain of the Fire Tars butted in. He was someone revered by 700 Fire Tars. If you thought about the Fire Tars ecology, that was a tremendous thing. He was capable of sufficiently dealing with Bastro. Also, if the great chieftain handled Bastro, after that there was only one person that could be considered an obstacle. Count Argong. Considering that all four nobles eliminated by Muyung were barons, if it was a count, his existence was a much greater obstacle. He didn't carry a weapon. Instead, he was carrying a single bead. Shwaeaeok. Every time he stroked the bead, black gusts of wind projected outwards. The devil soldiers also leaped from the remnants of the groundwater that burst forth. It wasn't an entirely good situation. Mwiyong, do you know why the fire tars are called unrivaled predators? Augur spoke with a calm expression. Isn't it because they're inherently strong? That is also true, however. We have acquired the habit of fighting. Even if we aren't given orders, we know what needs to be done on our own. Mwiyong looked around their surroundings. Paya. Bastro and the great chieftain were in a fierce battle. Suddenly, he moved closer and reached out his fist, and through the force of wind alone, it was enough to shake the ground. The other fire tars cleared the area for the great chieftain's battle. They were tying up the feet of the high-ranking devil soldiers and strongly fighting back. Although we also had a cutthroat competition regarding the Pum tree, we were able to peacefully progress our work thanks to you, Mwiyong, as you solved the chronic problem. It was like a butterfly effect. What if Mwiyong hadn't been able to solve the chronic problem of the Pum tree? The fire tars would not have been able to easily unite. They competed for the Pum trees because Pum trees had short lifespans and once the problem was solved they were able to fully share them with each other. However, just when they were about to live harmoniously, Duke Bastro burned down the Pum tree. It was this occasion that led to 700 fire tar comrades that had aligning interests with Mwiyong. Augur, Takin. Open the way. I will put that typhoon to sleep. Is there a way? The area of the typhoon was spread wide with Count Argong at its center. The blades of wind that did not discriminate between foe or ally. Mwiyong nodded his head. It seems we can offset it. It would have been impossible before, but there were some skills that were obtained from ingesting the crystallization of the devils. Although complete destruction was impossible, if utilized properly it might be possible to offset the typhoon adequately. So far I've earned four skills. He'd killed four barons and earned four skills. Thorn formation, pain's perspiration, total combination, and underwater explosion. Among those Mwiyong had made a new skill from combining pain's perspiration and underwater explosion. The skill acquired from combining the two, zero explosion. Mwiyong stretched out his hand. At that moment, numerous ice crystals began to form around his palm. As a crystal the size of a fist was made, Mwiyong tossed it. Kwang. The ice crystal that flew directly towards the typhoon exploded and caused the creation of countless ice formations. Eventually, to his surprise, the typhoon was frozen. However, once was not enough. Mwiyong ran out and continued to use zero explosion. Where did you learn to use that kind of skill? Takin's bones rattled as he asked. For some reason, he seemed envious, but Mwiyong merely shrugged his shoulders. When they exploded the groundwater, the surrounding area became humid from the heated water spread throughout the air. It was natural that the typhoon itself seemed to freeze because it had sucked up all the moisture when it was being created. Shwaak. However, the authority of a duke wouldn't merely summon a single typhoon. Several gusts of wind lashed at their surroundings. Dozens of powerful gusts of wind similar to black holes were created and it felt like you could be sucked in just by being close to them. Swung. Anguish gave a small cry. Augur and Takin were faithful shields. They were blocking the gusts with their bodies and cut through the wind as they opened the way. It's not difficult. Two horns sprouted from Weung's head. 
acceleration. The world slowed to quarter speed. However, there wasn't much opportunity for dueling the count. To even continue the fight, he needed to end it with a single stroke. Paeaeok. With Augur and Tak and shielding, Muyung flew up. Bi Sung Min. He was an arc lich. He had the ability of a saint and a necromancer. Even though he was a lich, his existence was incompatible with the devils. It was possible for Bi Sung Min to inflict a fatal blow just by injecting a devil with holy power and then exploding it. Of course, he was the priority target for the devil soldiers for this reason. However, it wasn't easy for the low-level devils to even approach Bi Sung Min. Waeya. The necklace Bi Sung Min wore, the talisman, spewed out light. The talisman was the material that makes up the holy sphere. It was a necessity for the manifestation of a wish and was desired by over 100,000 priests, popes, and saints. Just by its existence, it had the ingrained power to repel evil. However, there was a lot of devil soldiers. Three high-level devil soldiers surrounded Bi Sung Min in no time. You have an incompatible object. Hand it over to us. We'll die it with evil. What can a single lich do? Give it up. The devil spoke in a tone akin to whispering. It was similar to some kind of temptation, but Bi Sung Min answered calmly. I too have no idea what I am capable of. He had memories, but they weren't accurate. Even if he conjured up his memories they would only be boring. That was because he had lost all emotions as he had become a lich. The memory of the living enemy couldn't affect him in any way, and so he ignored them. He wasn't certain of what or how much he could do. However, it was strange. Only one doubt continuously showed its face in his head. What am I searching for? What do I have to find? The one buried memory he had. However, he didn't know what it was. Bi Sung Min thought he would have to search for that something forever. But one sure thing is that you can't stop me. Thump. Bi Sung Min clasped his hands. He placed a divine blessing on him. Shalalalala. An increasing sound of singing from somewhere. As if they were bewitched, the high-level devils lost their focus and drooled. After a while, a light formed above Bi Sung Min's head. The light gathered and formed into a circular disc shaped like an egg, and encircled him. The power of a saint. Swoosh. Splash. Soon the particles of light brightened till they exploded outward. Although the radius was not wide, the devils within it were instantly reduced to ashes. Swoo up. Bi Sung Min opened his mouth wide. Then, the ashes of the devils got sucked into his mouth. These devils' memories. Whoever they killed and fought. As expected of devils, they were evil. Bi Sung Min was an undead that could grow infinitely from light and darkness. Also, now that he'd inhaled the ashes of the devils, he gained their memories and power. Although it was completely insignificant compared to eating crystallization. It's not what I wanted. They weren't the memories and power Bi Sung Min wanted. Will I be able to know if I covet more evil? As if he was put on a spell, Bi Sung Min moved and began to hunt the devils. Thud. Count Argong fell. His entire body was frozen solid and within the ice, he had turned to ashes. Five consecutive times. He'd gained a crystallization every time he killed nobles. Muyong immediately picked up the crystallization and swallowed it. Then, his whole body wriggled and changed once again. This wasn't bad either. However, it was hard to be happy for long. Thump. In the distance, the time had stopped. The battle between the great chieftain and Bastro was at the level of a miracle, but like Muyong's disposal of Count Argong, an outcome was produced. And the winner was the great chieftain. Bastro, you're Oris's breed. Do you think Oris will protect you? Oris was a demon god's name. And the last remaining body was the main body. The great chieftain seized its neck. However, Bastro didn't lose his smile. He is evil itself. It's not a name someone like you could even speak of. You may not remember me, 
but I remember you. The one who married Oris's daughter, the king's son-in-law, Bastro. The great chieftain pointed to his own forehead. The only wound left on him. He was the Fire Tar's living legend, but somehow only that wound was still visible. I was a performer caught by Oris. My entire body was mutilated and I crawled like a dog. Blame yourself for following him. Bastro did not respond. Instead, he only gave a creepy smile. Then, the great chieftain took him by the head and legs and tore him apart. Pike. Bastro's entire body stretched like rubber and his internal organs poured out as he died. After a while, little by little, the intestines that had been scattered on the ground began to turn into ashes. The great chieftain, who confirmed that they had become ashes, turned his body. He had also suffered numerous injuries while dealing with Bastro. One ear was cut off and his skin was scratched to such a degree that his right cheekbone was visible. But the great chieftain was the victor. The great chieftain killed the enemy's leader. Bastro died. The great chieftain raised one hand. It was a sign of victory. Puhuk. It was that moment. The great chieftain frowned. Then he bent his head and saw the stab wound that had penetrated his heart. Wasn't it the virtue of the fire tars to remain vigilant until the end? Haraka the clown. Bastro was not dead. It wasn't only that he hadn't died, his appearance had changed again. A gigantic bizarre creature with four legs and six tails. It had no fur. Instead, it was as large as a fire tar and covered in blazing black flames. Why do you think I was chosen as the king's son-in-law? I who isn't even a demon king. Pooh sh. Bastro's tail slipped out of great chieftain Haraka's body. You bastard. The great chieftain Haraka's eyes drooped. But he couldn't speak any more. Thump. As he collapsed, all the movements on the battlefield stopped. As if it were agreed upon. Even Weung, who was watching from a distance, frowned. However, the change in Bastro's appearance was extremely ominous. That was the real main body which appeared when the seven bodies were crushed. The seven grains were all gathered in one place. If it's like this, I can't win. However, it wasn't that there was no way at all. Nguyung took out one talisman. Kwaok. As he tore the talisman, a phrase appeared. Bastro. That jerk wasn't the only devil. Sword One had also become a devil. He who was among the top ten humans, he stared at Nguyung as soon as he appeared. Nguyung drew anguish and said briefly. You will have to take the lead, Sword One. Chapter 125, Gremory, 2. T.L., Nadu. Editor, Lee Suris. Sponsored by, Anonymous, Sean L., and Andrew M. At that moment, Sword One's sword was covered with black colored energy. Although Weung lost some agility and lost the effect of the Lunatic Sovereign's set's effect of an increase in all stats by five, the use of Sword One was greater than he expected. The energy that could be felt by Bastro, who stood right in front of him, exceeded that of the great chieftains. Bastro also didn't lack compared to Sword One. If he could just hunt him, Muyung was certain to receive a reward greater than what he sacrificed. The work of killing tens of thousands of devils and getting rid of all the nobles, including Bastro. It wouldn't be just a half-decent reward. I will kill you all. Bastro was truly going berserk. As if all restrictions had been released, he didn't differentiate between friend or foe. For someone who wasn't even a demon king to marry a demon god's daughter. He felt like he could understand the reason why. Incomplete strength. Although it was a form created by combining all seven clones into a main body, it was incomplete. For some reason, his form was extremely unstable. It was because the seven grains didn't combine properly. Even so, he was exhibiting that much Herculean strength. An authority even the demon kings and demon gods would have their eyes on. However, no one could stop that obstinacy. Other fire tars were also in chaos. Especially Augur. He stood still like a hardened statue. 
is my opponent that monster? Sword One spoke as he raised his sword and pointed towards Bastro. Maybe because he had the tendency of a devil unlike normal undead, his way of talking was extremely cold. It was definitely a different tendency compared to other undead. Sword 2 and Sword 3 approached near Sword 1, one after the other. These three people were labeled by the name Sword. When the three were gathered, an additional effect was received. The three swords resonated and spread out in a triangular form. Sword 1 stood at the front and looked at Muyung. Muyung spoke slowly. Work together with the other sword bones and kill him. I understood. If it isn't the sword's source, I will not lose. The sword's source. It seemed like he was talking about King Slayer. Although Sword 1 became a devil, he remembered his fight against King Slayer. Even how greatly he lost. Since it was sad to even call it a fight. Maybe because of this reason, Sword 1 treated King Slayer as the sword's source. However, that was because King Slayer was such an unconventional being. The Masters of the Darkness. Although he didn't know them well, didn't even the great magician Merlin think highly of them? So, unless it was that sort of unconventional being, Sword One wouldn't be easily defeated. When people say top ten strongest humans, they are talking about the ones who can fight equally against even a demon king. There are quite a few who could be within the top ten humans. But, they can't all fight against a demon king. Demon king. The end of all authorities. Only those who could face them had strongest added to their title. Now, the meaning slightly changed and was now called the top ten humans, but in reality, the original meaning was the ten heroes who could face against a demon king. Either way, it meant that the top ten humans were that much of a master at figuring out the demon king's authorities. All those who were among the top ten humans got stronger by having pure skills as their foundation. Even if the meaning had changed, only those who passed the minimum requirements were called the top ten. Purity is used as the base for true strength to figure out authority. And Sword One only got stronger by practicing his sword. That's why he was the best opponent for Bastro. If the great chieftain had fallen, in reality only Sword One could face Bastro. But, Muyung wasn't planning to just sit aside. B Sung Min. Swoog. A black circle appeared on the floor and out of it, Bi Sung Min soared up. Bi Sung Min lowered his head as he popped a devil's heart he was holding with his hand. Did you call? Place a saint's blessing on me. It will harm your body. I don't recommend it. A saint's blessing was a strong light type skill. On the other hand, Muyung was filled with powers of the darkness. Um Inajura, and Gremory's anguish. There was not one thing that would make you think of light. If he was to receive a blessing, it was definitely possible to expect for the power to reject Muyung, possibly harming him. But, I still need to. The progress of the battle had turned once again. It was because all the fire tars were swept with shock with the great chieftain's fall. If the tide didn't change soon, a loss was crystal clear. It would be the same if Sword One killed Bastro. Since, during the time of their fight, other allies would drop like flies. Muyung spoke again. Ten minutes is enough. I can withstand that much. Bi Sung Min closed his eyes. If it was some other undead, he would have acted without question but Bi Sung Min was reborn as a lich through authority of death. For instance, the guardian of the territory, Balton, was all about protecting the humans. Unlike other undead, they had inherent goals. Muyung thought the reason why he asked for Muyung's opinion might be because of these distinct characteristics. A moment later, B. Sungmin, who opened his eyes, nodded his head. I understand. At the same time, he held Muyung's hand. And then from B. Sungmin's hand, a sentence of light was written and started to place an energy of blessing. Blaze. Ten minutes was enough. Ten minutes for Muyung was longer than for others. Muyung started to move not long after the sword bone trio left. His horns sprouted and the world started to become slower. Augur couldn't believe the scene in front of his eyes. The great chieftain. 
he had fallen. He might have even died. The living legend of the fire tars and Augur's idol. Augur was who he was now all thanks to the great chieftain. Ah! Normally, the fire tars were stubborn. They hated change and had strong tendency to be satisfied with their current situation. On the other hand, Augur didn't fear challenges. Even if he failed, he just laughed it off. That nature didn't just get created all of a sudden. It was only possible because he grew under the great chieftain. The great chieftain taught things about freedom and also stressed responsibilities and duties. He continuously stressed for Augur to not be prejudiced and be on guard about becoming arrogant after taking power. He fulfilled the role of a good father and a strict teacher at the same time. But, he, who Augur didn't think would ever fall, was currently lying down on the ground. The world stopped and Augur couldn't hear anything. Are you going to stop because of a tragedy? If you are, then I'm disappointed. Mwiyong spoke. With just that message behind, he ran into battle. Augur wanted to stop fighting but Mwiyong told him not to. Afterwards, his eyes bulged he was so surprised by Mwiyong's actions in this battle. In a short time, he became the center of the battle as he received the gazes from every devil soldier. With the light's blessing, he showed overwhelming martial art skills. It was unlike Mwiyong but Augur knew it was to show others. It was so. He was showing them. To the fire tars, and to Augur. As he didn't need to make a big deal like that. Um is dominating the battle. Don't yield to mere devils. We have the much greater Um and Hum. A Um. A Hum. We need to save the Lord. To the thick of the battle, shit, let's go. Small living creatures made a fuss over it. Mwiyong was using himself as bait to change the winds once more. No one knew if it would become a headwind or tailwind. At least to those small living creatures, it definitely worked to stir a strong typhoon. I need to move. The great chieftain had fallen. The only one left was the vice chieftain, Augur. If Augur stood stupidly, other fire tars would lose their direction. Even the weak creatures tried their best to fight, the fire tars couldn't just stand by and watch. From now on, I'm the great chieftain. Now, when he confirmed the great chieftain's absence, Augur needed to quickly rise to that position. So, his role was to remove this chaos. The great chieftain always wanted it. The great chieftain raised Augur with this free spirit for only one reason. To make a fire tar kingdom and not merely a fire tar tribe. Now, it was time to move on to pursue his wishes. Sword one sword trapped space. Sword one sword ruled over laws. Bastro, who was chaos itself, was like a natural enemy. You who isn't even a human or a devil. Do you think you can win against me? A dog that's losing a fight tends to be loud. The six tails attached to Bastro shook the land. However, Sword One's swordsmanship scuttled even the tail attacks. Although he didn't end it, with Sword One's endlessly pure swordsmanship, he had cut the tails with authority. Like a huge dominant mountain, Sword One moved forward with each step. Bastro could only be in a hurry. However, he couldn't withdraw either. He was confined in the area ruled by Sword One. In this space, which was weaved together like a spider's web, all he could do was struggle, entrapped. How long are you planning to confine me? The six tails stood up like a straight line. Thump! Like pillars, they struck the ground and produced a lot of black smoke. Afterwards, tons of circular objects started to pour out from the tail. Clash! Clash clash clash! Everything touched by the circular objects exploded. And nothing was left after the explosion. As if something had taken a bite, it disappeared cleanly. Due to the shockwaves, Sword 1 momentarily wobbled. The barrier created by Sword 2 and Sword 3 was broken. You are not a source. However, it still was an unstable incomplete being. Someone that wasn't even a source couldn't win against purity just because it pretended to be so. Of course, Sword 1 also wasn't at that level but he wouldn't lose to someone that wasn't a source. 
he wouldn't have been called one of the top ten humans for no reason. Sword One organized his energy as he held his sword. At the same time, the sphere that flew from Bastro's tails clashed with his sword. Bang! With Augur's awakening as the start, the battle turned around once again. There was no other word besides awakening to describe it. As if he never stopped, he moved his feet faster than anyone else. He killed without fearing death itself. And the fight ended. The moment when the evil soldiers were dominated, Bastro and Sword One's fight had also ended. Slosh! Sword One's sword sliced Bastro's body. The six tails had already been severed. As if the scene was showing how fierce the fight was, there was no land left in their surroundings. Only a thick smoke that settled around their battleground, and within it, the two crazily fought each other. ki a a a a A sound that rang people's ears. It was the sound that alerted the end of the battle. In time, Bastro started to turn into ashes and disappeared. Afterwards, Sword One approached Muyung with his one arm and one leg lost and wings ribbed. He moved using his sword as a cane instead of his leg. I have completed my contract. Like the start, a completely emotionless expression. That short message was all he said. Sword 2, Sword 3, and Sword 1's form slowly started to break down. Then, they returned to their talisman form. The content of the contract was to merely kill Bastro and since he had completed it, there was no reason for him to stay. Also, to recover his damaged body, he needed to return to his talisman form. Ting. Rumble. A black marble dropped to the ground as Sword 1 disappeared. He didn't need to think to know what it was. Bastro's crystallization. With this, 6. All noble devils gave out crystallizations. As if it was destiny. Chapter 126, Gremory, 3. TL, Nadu. Editor, Lee Suris. What would be the probability to get crystallizations continuously from noble devils? He was certain that it was extremely rare. Truly, point tens of a millionth of a probability. It was still theoretically possible, but from a common sense point of view, it was hard to think it would occur. However, in reality, it did occur and another crystallization was in Wuyong's hand. It was an additional effect created after the achievement effect Devil Hunter became an A rank. It was to take away the title from the Noble Devil opponent after killing. Even if Muyong didn't kill them himself, if Muyong's undead killed them, it seemed like the same effect was placed. I'll take it. There was no reason to reject it. Soon, a grey haze appeared around Muyong. An evil tendency stat. Muyong grinned. Either way, he was far from light. And after a bit later, the surroundings became loud. You ha 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 ha. Devils, don't even think about coming back here. We give this victory to Um. The Dakibus became excited. With Sahan at the front, they were tasting victory with their weapons raised. It was so. Victory. They had suppressed all the devil soldiers and won. The losses were big, but currently, the sweetness of their victory was much greater. However, not everyone was tasting the sweetness of their victory. The expression of the fire tars, especially Augur, didn't seem to get brighter even though they had won. They just stood and prayed quietly in front of their great chieftain with their fists clenched. The great chieftain has died. It seemed like in the end, he didn't survive after being hit by Bastro's final blow. It was enough to make even the great Augur be silent. Muyong didn't meet with the great chieftain that many times but he also didn't really know what sorrows were to lose someone special. And so, he couldn't align with Augur's sadness. It was impossible for him to empathize. However, Augur was the closest person to Muyong among the people who were alive in the underworld. So, Muyong made a proposal. I have the power to bring back people who are dead. To undead, you mean? Augur reacted. As Muyong affirmed, Augur shivered his body. Muyong, I hope you're joking. Even the great chieftain, and even all the fire tars that died at this place, wouldn't want to live as undead. 
he was totally serious. If Muyong wasn't the one who spoke of this, then he felt like Augur would have thrown a spear right away to kill him. Sadness. Muyong looked towards one side and saw the king mutant chewing on a devil soldier. The king mutant's main material was assassins. The assassins of the forest of death raised by Wang Chunglin. In the past, they were Muyong's colleagues. That's why they were revived as Avengers. However, amongst them, there wasn't any kind of sadness or sentimentality. If they were really that close, there would truly be feelings of wanting to revive them. Even if that means turning them into undead. However, Muyong took a step back. He knew that his common sense and his ideas weren't normal. How could they be normal if he lived 40 years as a puppet? Staying in the middle of the living and the dead. It would be hard but, this also would be a stepping stone in my development. So, he needed to develop his disjointed sense of balance. If he could just balance them, he would become closer to becoming the Absolute. Afterwards, a message popped up explaining that the battle had ended. Muyong just concentrated at the message. Impossible achievement. It was an achievement he received for when they found it impossible for Muyong to achieve in his current state. And it was difficult for Muyong to achieve a fight against six noble devils, including a duke. It would be the same even if he had the help of the great chieftain and the fire tars. Did the situation get overturned a few times even during battle? Maybe because the achievement was that difficult but unlike the last time, the Star of Twelve Zodiacs gave him two gifts. Muyong nodded his head and looked at the two things that appeared from mid-air. Name, Helmet of Taurus. Rank, A++++. Classification, Equipable Type. Endurance, 100,000. Effect, One of the Twelve Zodiac Stars. A Helmet Placed on Ares. Asterisk Magic Resistance plus 100. Asterisk Taurus's good-naturedness, symbol of wealth. The rate of growth for the user's territory greatly increases. Asterisk able to quickly rush. When you collect 3 out of the 12 zodiac stars, all stats plus 30. When you collect 6 out of the 12 zodiac stars, it ignores skills below A rank. When you collect 12 out of the 12 zodiac stars, achievement effect, king of 12 zodiacs. The first one the Helmet of Taurus. It was the second set equipment after the Belt of Ares. On top, the Helmet of Taurus was a territory equipment. Normally, this type of equipment that gave a good advantage to the own territory was used by the leaders of guilds or clans, and it was rare. Very good. Since it would take a long time to recover from the damages received from this battle. This territory equipment was something that could reduce that time greatly. Next, he looked at the cape. Name, Cape of Gemini. Rank, A++++. Classification, Equipable Type. Endurance, 80,000. Effect, One of the 12 Zodiac Stars. A cape placed on Gemini. Asterisk Agility plus 50. Asterisk 2 Antibodies, Immunity against Poison and Disease. Asterisk 2's Development. Choose one and greatly increase his developmental speed. When you collect three out of the twelve zodiac stars, all stats plus thirty. When you collect six out of the twelve zodiac stars, it ignores skills below A rank. When you collect twelve out of the twelve zodiac stars, achievement effect, king of twelve zodiacs. Immunity to poison and disease. It was the perfect equipment to prepare for a curse. With this, he was able to receive an additional effect as the three of the set equipment were added. Even if he had lost the effect of Lunatic Sovereign's set, it was a much better effect. He lost one and earned two. Now, all that's left is. Muyong looked at the crystallization he held in his hand. The devil's strength gathered in one and became a crystallization. If it was Duke Bastro's crystallization, the strength which Muyong had seen, it was great enough for anyone to desire it. Before he had a taste of victory, he first gulped the crystal. Brrrrrrr. At the same time, he shivered his whole body. His veins bulged across his whole body. His body rose into the air. 
Kiaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Editor, Lee Suras. Sponsored by, Andrew M. and Arlos. Who are you? A soft voice tickled Mwyung's ear. Even if it was just a simple sound, it had the peculiar power to attract the opposite sex. If he was even a bit careless, he felt like he would be bewitched by the sound. And now Mwyung was just listening in a dark space. A mental world. The black space was Mwyung's mind. In other words, this conversation was akin to telepathy. But he couldn't be helped but be surprised when he thought how he came to be in this mental world. The Call of the Devil Was it a book that allowed you to contact a particular devil? Gremory Soon Weung realized who he was connected to. A message popped up which definitely said, You have connected to Gremory. The 56th Seat Demon God, who lead 26 Demon King Legions. It was unlikely for there to be another being who could sway his rationality just with their voice. Also, Mwyung also had an inextricable relationship with her. The qualifications to become the Demon King of the 27th Legion and the weapon, Anguish, were both related to Gremory. However, he never thought that he could get in contact with her at this moment. I'm Mwyung. Are you really Gremory? He couldn't help but ask. Even though his voice was firm, internally Mwyung was taken aback. He was just checking his rewards after the fight ended, when all of a sudden, a connection with Gremory had occurred. After a moment of silence, Gremory replied. You're right. But, it's strange. I can't see it but I can feel my blessings on you. It was an obvious thing. From the moment he discovered the Star of David from the Blue Temple, Mwyung's path was decided to a certain degree. And the owner of the Star of David was Gremory. There was nothing weird if Gremory had felt her blessings on Mwyung. Swoosh. Mwyung took out anguish. Then, the sword cried more loudly and announced its presence on its own. It seems like it's because I have the qualifications of the Demon King to lead the 27th Legion. The 27th Legion? Ah. Gremory's surprised voice filled the air. She was a demon god and it was very easy to distinguish the truth. Ryeeeeb. Soon, the sword ripped the area. While producing the sound of a leather ripping, few hands popped out. Gremory's mental world had pierced through and into Mwyung's. Although they weren't meeting each other face to face and were very far away from each other, the mental landscape was influenced just by the exchange of a few words. I can't avoid it. However, it was fast. Soon, numerous hands wrapped around Mwyung. Crash. But, none of the hands were able to touch Mwyung. A barrier of light was raised and it warded off numerous hands. Boing. The armful's cradle spirit hopped madly on top of Mwyung's head. Although its outer appearance was a mere lump of light, it was still an ancient spirit. Even if it was just born, it was a great existence that could influence the disordered terror. He wasn't sure why it was with him at this place but it seemed like he could exhibit his true strength in his mental world. What are you doing? A prehistoric spirit, you have made a contract with it. I'm sorry. But, I need to be certain. If you really are the person I was waiting for. In Gremory's voice, he could feel her desperation. And Weung was surprised. For a demon god to apologize. Never in his life had he heard it before. The demon gods who invaded humanity were all pure evil and they invaded without a word. Only ruins were left in the places where they passed. Apology? He hadn't heard anything similar to that. But, how could he not be surprised when the 56th seat demon god personally apologized? Of course, even if it was so, it was true that she suddenly invaded his mental world. He couldn't help but feel unpleasant. If you truly are the Demon King of the 27th Legion, I request that you won't reject my touch. Mwyung pondered. Mwyung thought about what the reason might be for a demon god, like Gremory, to request from him as if she was in need. If she wanted to, didn't she just needed to act? Mwyung looked at the numerous hands that hung around on the other side of the light barrier. They said she was the only female demon god but it seems like she is an aberration. 
There were stories that Gremory was the only woman out of the 72 demon gods and had a friendly attitude towards humans. Although they said her beauty was so great that it could bewitch all the gods, by seeing how she expressed those many hands as her touch, this also seemed to be an exaggeration. Either way, even if Armful's cradle was stopping her, if Gremory exhibited her true strength, it would not have any chance of stopping her. If it is a process he has to undergo then. Due to the Demon King of the 27th Legion skill, it was a process he had to undergo at least once. Didn't someone say, the sooner it happens, the better? Boing! Boing! Mwyung calmed the armful's cradle that was still angry on top of his head. As he placed his hand and roughly pet it, the guy that was hopping around madly slowly calmed down. It seemed like the meaning had still gone across even if he didn't say it. Swoosh! Soon, numerous hands wrapped around Mwyung. The feeling wasn't all that great but the touch was really soft. Although it just passed by, it was enough to sway his mind. If she was able to influence Mwyung this much, it was obvious how others would react without even looking at them. Enchanting. But, Gremory isn't human. In Mwyung's head, Gremory already had an appearance which was far from human. As he recalled she was a monster with numerous hands, he was able to escape a bit from being enchanted. A moment later, as if the confirmation process had ended, her hands moved back. You truly are someone with my blessing. Did you think it was a lie? Honestly, yes. But, since I have confirmed you were not lying, please excuse my discourtesy. The demon gods are evil. It was the truth everyone agreed on. They were born from evil and were incarnations that were raised by eating evil. However, the feeling Gremory gave off was definitely different. You are an odd demon god. I'm just hiding my evil. In reality, I'm more vile than anyone else. But, the thing I'm going to talk about is much more important than that. It seemed like she had something to say. Mwyung quietly listened. Then, Gremory continued to talk. Do you know of the items called Fragments of the Fisher? I have heard of it. In the past, it was an item that the demon gods used to invade. He still clearly remembered when a fisher was suddenly created in the sky and the great city and the blue temple were attacked. The item used back then was the Fragments of the Fisher. Please find the Fragments of the Fisher. Anguish which you are holding, will show you the way. Anguish. Yes and if it's within this space, no matter how far apart you are, you are able to send me the fragments. If you bring me the three fragments, I will acknowledge you as my demon king. I will even give you the authority myself. Her voice became quiet. Even the hands in front of him returned to their original location. And as if Gremory realized it, she quickly spoke. We don't have time. If you are planning to protect humanity, Please help me. We can't let Bale follow through with his plans. Tap. Soon, silence followed. Like a blackout, it was a sudden occurrence. However, he had heard everything he needed. It seems like the situation isn't all that good. He thought about Gremory's words and painted a picture of the situation. If the Demon King legions under her command acted, they should be able to find whatever they were looking for. However, she started her search by requesting Mwyung's help, a person she met for the first time. From a common sense point of view, it wasn't logical. It meant that Gremory was forced into a corner. My predictions were right, the demon gods were fighting over the fragments. Mwyung was certain. The demon gods were currently unable to easily leave their territory due to their own reasons. Two factions, or perhaps more were divided and in conflict. This fight would last for a few years from now and within those few years, a conclusion will be made. And Gremory's faction would be defeated. That would be the reason for the great calamity to occur. This was the golden opportunity. By entering their crowd, he could stall for time or eliminate his opponents. And to do this, it was a must for him to find this fragment of the fissure. He couldn't let Gremory's party be easily defeated. 
Muyong was the only existence who could change this past. Boing. Boing. Muyong gently tickled Armful's cradle. Gremory called it a prehistoric spirit, not simply an ancient spirit. At the same time, she was surprised and changed her attitude towards Muyong. Thanks to this, they were able to progress the conversation smoothly. Not just that but Gremory knew right away that Muyong was human. Even though she knew he was human, she had acknowledged that he had the qualifications to become a demon king. It was the hardest obstacle, but he overcame it well. I need to keep going without stopping. Since he had overcome the obstacle, now it was time to run. He was pressed for time. He now had about nine years, at most. Within that time, he needed to change the demon god's game or break it. Whole hiding. Not long soon after, with the sound of wind, Muyong returned to reality as his mental world closed. Gremory opened her eyes which had been closed. Her deer-like beautiful eyelids slightly shook as they went up. Numerous devils were watching this scene. That was right. They were just watching her. No one was allowed to touch her, it was a taboo. Facing those who absorbed the fragments. It would definitely be a brutal trial. From what she had confirmed, Muyong's skills weren't at a level she was pleased with. However, Gremory had hopes for what Muyong held onto. She wasn't exactly sure who those beings were but she felt a few who were in a level similar to demon kings or even higher than demon kings. Meaning, she could say he had infinite potential to develop. Muyong, the one I blessed. I wish good luck for your future. Gremory wished sincerely. However, it was nothing but a voiceless echo. Numerous people pray to a god and wish for them to be answered but who could gods wish to and want from? The hearts of all of the devils in her surrounding pumped as they watched her woeful figure. That she was someone they must protect. Tens of millions of devils were ready to protect Gremory with their lives. As she was that much of a noble and beautiful being. The battle was a complete victory. But, in its aftermath, Numerous corpses were left. I will allow you to bury them near the pum tree. Augur spoke. It was a privilege to be buried near a pum tree which only true warriors could earn. He meant that he was going to grant everyone who participated in this battle that privilege. The great chieftain was buried first, followed by the rest. Muyong, what is a king? Late evening. As they watched the moon up in the sky, Augur suddenly spoke to Muyong. Muyong didn't reply. Then, Augur continued to talk. As if he was making a promise to himself. I'm going to make a fire to our kingdom. The great chieftain taught me to always look at a much wider world. You would be able to do it. Augur definitely had the qualities. The question of what a king is could be thought over when he became one. Augur stared at Muyong. And then talked. Would you share the cup of brother with me? The cup of brother. It was something he never thought about. However, there was nothing bad in befriending Augur. Augur laughed out loud as Muyong nodded his head. Ha ha. Good. From now on, Muyong, you and I will be in a much stronger relationship than blood. In general, brothers need to help each other. Even if our positions change, this relationship will not be swayed. Was it because the great chieftain who Augur thought was closer than his blood ties had died? He was more emotional than usual. Augur clenched his fist. Afterwards, he opened a lid of a bottle of liquor and squeezed out blood as if he was squeezing a lemon. Muyong also did the same. From now on, we are brothers. After exchanging the bottle of liquor, they drank it at once. Then, Augur smacked his lips as if it wasn't enough to fulfill him. It was because even if it was a bottle of liquor, it was not much compared to Augur's size. Muyong grinned. A new relationship. Brothers. It didn't sound bad. Chapter 128, Hell Horse, 1. T.L., Nadu. Editor, Lee Suras. The red moon was still dominating the sky. Vibrant like blood. And it even felt like it gave off the scent. 
Muyong reconstructed the castle with the help of the dwarves and waited for more devils. We were lucky. In the case of Bastro, he could say they were lucky. Because Bastro didn't attack Muyong abruptly, he had enough time to prepare. However, he couldn't continuously be lucky. Soul's Tale Just, Muyong accomplished a big development as he got rid of Bastro. He earned a few skills and even had a steep increase in his stats themselves. One or two high-level devils wouldn't be able to win against Muyong. And Bastro's authority which was similar to replicating. He was now able to imitate it. The soul's tail created a clone that was the same as Muyong. He wasn't able to make and control six clones like Bastro, but the clone had about half of Muyong's strength. With a B rank, there isn't a chance. Or is there something that I'm lacking? He inwardly shook his head. Then, he reviewed the explanation for the skill. Name, Soul's Tail. Rank, B. Effect, it creates a clone exactly like the user. Depending on the condition of the clone, the user's strength can be placed. Asterisk only one clone can be summoned. Asterisk it imitates 63% of the user. Asterisk the duration is proportionate depending on the user's intelligence and wisdom, currently 7850 seconds. When it reaches S rank, the soul's tail evolves to the soul's rehabilitation. The special condition to exhibit abilities isn't met. S rank and a special condition. Both were a long way off. Currently, a rank sword master was the highest rank among the skills Muyong had. As he couldn't say that the difference between A and S was really only one level, it probably would have been faster for Muyong to find out what the special condition was. You are such a crossbreed. There are quite a lot of different smells coming from you. A night rank devil mocked him. After Bastro had died, about every seven days, one devil like this would wander in from the surrounding. Most were lower than a high rank devil, but sometimes like this, a baronet or a baron noble devil would roam around on his own. Muyong visited those sort of devils one by one and tried to hunt them. That's why you look tastier. It's like you changed your body to become a great dish for us. The devil smacked his lips. It seemed like he was telling himself that a mixed breed was tastier than a pure breed. Ping! Sharp nails popped out as the devil pushed from the ground. But, Muyong left the fight to his clone while he crossed his arms. From head to toe, the clone was wearing was wearing the same equipment, but the total of all those performances was only 63% of Muyong. It's not a usual skill. It was even able to imitate S-rank equipment, at only B rank. Although there was a difference in performance and duration, it still was amazing. It was similar to a miracle that could come true if it was a main skill offered by a secret class. It meant that it was the authority that went beyond the norm. Who? You are hiding around like a mouse. Wait for me. My teeth will soon be nailed to your neck. A baronet. He seemed to be lacking in intelligence, maybe because he was a devil classified as a knight. However, his movements were exceptional. The clone which held anguish was slowly being pushed back. However, it didn't easily get pushed back either. It was because even if it was only 63%, it was similar to Muyong before he fought with Bastro. While controlling his clone, he turned on his status viewer. Title Darkness and Abyss, All Stats Plus 10 Achievement Effect There are 9 Achievement Effects Class Effect Death Lord, Lord Class, Ruler of Death King Slayer, Lord Class, Slayer of Kings Stats Strength 372, 229 plus 143, Agility 393 215 plus 178. Stamina 350, 191 plus 159. Intelligence 357, 223 plus 134. Wisdom 328, 224 plus 2104. Fighting Aura 291, 152 plus 139. 
Magic Resistance 429, 90 plus 339, Spirit Ability 259, 120 plus 139, Evil Tendency 389, 300 plus 89, Total Level, 355. Special Note, Fighting Aura has been awakened. Completed the third metamorphosis. You have accomplished three flowers condensing onto the head and five chi and have realized purity. Before and after comparison. Strength 305 Agility 242 Stamina 276 Intelligence 266 Wisdom 247 Fighting Aura 291 Magic Resistance 300 Spirit Ability 200 Strength 372 Agility 393 Stamina 350 Intelligence 357 Wisdom 328 Fighting Aura 291 Magic Resistance 429 Spirit Ability 259 Evil Tendency 389 Although there were small changes with the title, there was a great difference regarding the stats part which could even be called revolutionary. Among them, Agility and Magic Resistance showed the most changes. Even if he had lost Agility by summoning Sword 1, as if the misfortune turned into a blessing, he gained much more in agility stats. The one that gave the most influence in this was the equipment of the 12 zodiac stars. Also, total level part caught his attention. He remembered people saying how if you surpass a certain standard, you could check your level. The total by adding the pure stats and the supporting stats. A top rank monster's standard was around 300. If it was 355, among the five levels of top rank, it could be around the second level. This was enough to fight against the Hell Horse and the evil spirit predator Takan. Even if he wasn't in the top 10 humans, current Muyung was strong enough to be within the top 100 humans. Truly, it meant that he was caught up to around the halfway mark towards becoming a top 10 human. Considering how he reached this level within just one year, it was an unbelievably insane speed. If he was to enter any group, he would have a role as an influential figure. He also would not be lacking to act as a leader of a group above a mid-size. Being among the top 100 meant that he had that much destructive power. Of course, he was talking about it just simply by looking at the figures. If he read grains and used acceleration, Muyung was able to exhibit a strength greater than that and a total level of 500 was considered as the standard for transcendental beings, and even Dark Dragon Barka was far lacking when put to that standard. At most, Barka was around the 3.5 level of top rank. Either way, Muyung ceased his idle thoughts. It didn't seem like there was a change to the clone. A clone's possibility for growth. First, it wasn't by fighting. He already fought a few times using his clone. But, the clone's condition didn't change at all. With just this mere clone, it would only allow you to kill time. It seems like there is another special condition that affected its development. I'm going to stop playing around. Kaya ha ha ha. Be terror stricken. Come to think of it, Bastro's clones all had slight differences. Just by thinking of ripping off your intestines, I feel extremely happy. You're loud. It was in the blink of an eye. In no time, Muyung approached very close to the devil and delivered a kick. The devil who flew with a pop sound, rolled on the ground. A while after he flew, the devil was able to barely become conscious. Blink. The devil made a dumbfounded expression. It was because he didn't sense Muyung approaching at all. Before he knew it, three horns crowned Muyung's head. It was so. He didn't simply have an inner change. His two horns increased to three and he was able to manage his slowed world much better. By achieving the third metamorphosis, his speed had also increased. The speed was now eight times. Instead, the duration decreased to 30 seconds. But, he was able to run eight times slower with close to 400 agility. It wasn't possible to simply calculate but at the very least, you could say he was able to be close to or exceed a transcendental being for 30 seconds. Not just that but he also had devil wings. 
was it due to the influence of the evil tendency stat? Now he was in an ambiguous form that was weird to call it a dakibi or a devil. There was no way for the baronet devil to react. There was nothing weird for him to mistake it for blink, the magic to instantly move short distances. There is a slight burden. Once again, he moved closer to the devil as he murmured to himself. While he became faster, his body was unable to endure it. I need to raise my stamina more. Stamina was deeply related to the body's endurance. In his current situation, if he used it for any longer than 30 seconds, his whole body would be torn into pieces. Bang! Once again, the devil rolled on the ground. He could have ended in one shot but he did it to learn a bit more about the limits of his body. Cough. As the devil got up, he spat blood and spoke as he was confused. I don't see any signs of you using magic. But, as if he wasn't a knight for no reason, he quickly pulled himself together and gathered both of his hands. From his hand, blue poison started to spread. It was a fog of poison. The ground melted and the surrounding air was instantly contaminated. It was truly worth being called a deadly poison. Even if you use a strange move, it's useless. This poison fog melts everything it touches. If you misuse blink, you could fall straight into the poison. Baya. Mweung stretched out a fist with all his strength. Even though that was all, the air violently bounced out. A wind like a typhoon blew and it blew away the fog of poison. Although he had immunity against poison thanks to the effects of the Cape of Gemini, he did it because his vision was disturbed. The devil widened his eyes. This is nonsense. Arr, are you saying you are a demon king level? B but I didn't hear that there was a demon king like you. Zayak. The devil froze. The devil's whole body instantly became frozen. Mweung twisted the devil's neck with his hand, the clear difference in power evident in the resultant snap. Ting. Roll. Afterwards, a green crystal was dropped in the middle of the fluttering ashes of the devil. Mweung gulped the crystal without hesitation. As he ate more crystallizations, the lower grade ones had much lower effect in increasing stats. However, it was still better than nothing. Mweung shrugged his shoulders and unsummoned his clone. I need to find a different condition. There should be something else that is hidden in regards to Soul's tail. Didn't he almost see the final result of Duke Bastro's authority? Mweung had no plans of giving that up. However, he had other things to do. Before then, I will fight against the Hell Horse. It was almost time. The Hell Horse roamed around the lake. Beside him, a unicorn elegantly raised her face. It was originally the unicorn managed by Duke Bastro. However, Unicorn's mind was being manipulated by Bastro and when Bastro died, it instantly returned to its original elegance. Then, the Hell Horse clung to her as if he waited for this moment. Neha. The Hell Horse spread its wings wide and showed off its strength. However, the unicorn didn't even look at him. The two had a completely different tendency and as a side effect of mind manipulation, she raised her guard against everything related to devils. Nevertheless, the reason why she couldn't leave was because she didn't recover all her strength. Because the hell horse knew that she was going to leave once she was nearly recovered, he was even more desperate. Neeg. The hell horse was under King Slayer for all his life. Of course, there was no way for him to have a mate. He didn't know when an opportunity like this would come by. He raised his voice powerfully and rubbed his body or secretly wagged his tail. In Wuhi's eyes, he's just making a fool of himself. Then, unwelcoming visitors approached from the side. Mweong. And Fairy Wuhi. You're making a fool out of yourself. Mweong supported her. Then, the unicorn beside them became afraid. It was because she saw how Bastro died with her own two eyes. Also, Mweung gave off a strong evil scent. The hell horse came between them. He acted to try and protect the unicorn but Mweung just sneered at his actions. The hell horse was still coercive but Mweung didn't think the hell horse had this sort of side to him. I will use my last favor. 
After a fight, the one who loses will obey the other. That is my last favor. The hell horse raised all of his furs. This guy? He looked at Muyung with the sort of feeling that it was ridiculous. Neeg. It was a sign of acceptance. As if he was going to show off as much of his dashing figure in front of the unicorn, the hell horse took a step forward. Chapter 129, Hell Horse, End T.L. Nadu Editor, Lee Suras Muyung lightly warmed up. The fight with the hell horse had been expected from the beginning. Since he was a present given to Muyung by King Slayer and the one who didn't like being a present, the hell horse. So, the hell horse declared that he would only grant Muyung three wishes. By judging him, he would keep any promise he makes. It was Muyung's part to stop him from making another move. To make him obey, this was the only way. Neeg. The hell horse blew from his mouth. As if the meaning of this fight is to only show off to the unicorn, his movements were extremely light. Carelessness, or arrogance. The hell horse didn't know well of what was deeply at stake in this fight. Since he didn't know that even while he sensed it, they said he was foolish. Swoosh. Muyung took out anguish. By listening to the sono rant, Muyung finished his preparations. First. A horn sprouted out. Muyung was able to multiply time by eight and each horn added a multiple of two. When only one horn was sprouted, the time accelerated by two times. Inversely, the duration was much longer. If he only sprouted one horn, he could maintain it for over five minutes. Slash. Nay. As if Muyung had no chance against him, black spheres were created from the hell horse's wings. Zing. Swayok. The black sphere flew towards Muyung and restricted his movements. Explosions didn't occur but it was an attack where the area itself was corroded. It wasn't strange to call it a small black hole. Instantly, the surrounding region was a mess. It was disrupted with shapes that seemed as though a monster opened its mouth and took bites out of it. Muyung's horns increased to two. He escaped the erupted zones quickly. Although he grazed them a bit, because of his over 400 magic resistance, he didn't receive much damage. If magic resistance was 400, those attacks could almost be nullified as long as he doesn't get hit directly. There was also Belt of Ares which ignored skills below B rank. In short, his body became incompatible with the Hell Horse who used mostly magic skills. Muyung sliced the black sphere that flew right towards him into two complete halves with anguish. As speed, strength, and resistance were added, he was able to simply slice the black hole attacks. It was something unthinkable if it was him in the past. Compared to your sense of confidence, this is nothing. Blah is. The hell horse's entire body burned with hell fire. He was furious and this was circumstantial evidence that he was that much taken back. Normally, you couldn't really feel the person improve if you see them every day and stay beside them. When the Hell Horse first saw Muyung, he was completely weak compared to him and the Hell Horse disregarded him as he thought Muyung would always be below him even if he improved. But that opponent had directly faced his attack. How could he not be surprised? Muyung grinned. As expected, he is strong. Unlike the Hell Horse, Muyung observed his behavior closely from the very beginning. Because he thought he would one day face him, he watched his every move. Simply by looking at their fighting power, the Hell Horse slightly exceeded the second level of the top rank but if he looked at his utilization, the Hell Horse was in a level where it was meaningless to even divide the levels. However, he has a weakness. That he would spurt out stronger flames as he gets worked up. That fire was the Hell Horse's source of life. If Muyung could just suppress that fire, it was like suppressing the Hell Horse. Zeeb. Ice crystals formed on anguish. Then, on top of anguish, a countless number of ice needles floated. Squall's cruelty, poison fog, and soul's tail. At the same time, a powerful wind blew, ice needles were spewed, and poisonous fog appeared. Then, as if he accepted the frontal confrontation, the hell horse started to dash towards Muyung. 
Nihau. The hell fire burned everything. There was no way the hell horse would allow mere ice to touch him. Unfit for the name Zero Explosion, it couldn't even explode. Then, Mwiyong who nodded his head had another horn sprout from his head. With this, three horns now adorned his head. Eight times. The world slowed down even further. A feeling as if only he was left on a stranded world by himself. But, he was used to it. The moment he lifted his feet into midair, Mwiyong rushed recklessly. He just looked straight ahead and ran as he felt the air's resistance. They said everything had grains. Because fire's nature was very tempered and fierce, he wasn't able to see the grains. But, in the world where it was slowed down by eight times, he was able to see them. I didn't expect fire to have grains as well. He didn't know when it was four times slower. It was the truth he found out when the horns became three and he felt the world slowed by eight times. Perhaps, really perhaps, there might be grains to things that aren't visible like air and the huge underworld itself. There might be a world which you couldn't see at a few hundred times slower. Just by the thought of it, he felt a shudder. King Slayer left Mwiyong with something that didn't make sense. The Hell Horse's immediate proximity. First, the clone which was created by the soul's tail, jumped up from Mwiyong's back. Because he had skillfully blocked the Hell Horse's view, the Hell Horse didn't notice. Clone. Of course, because it had a similar energy as him, it was hard to differentiate unless you checked with your eyes. The clone had ice crystals all over its body. Zero Explosion The clone became the Zero Explosion itself and approached the Hell Horse. Crash. Due to the explosion, the flames shook. Within that time Weyong's eyes quickly took notice of the flame. I can see it. The grains. Even the hell fire had grains. Although it wasn't visible because it was hidden underneath other flames but when the hell horse shook due to the zero explosion, Weyong was definitely able to see them. If that was so, he had no reason to hesitate. The Hell Horse tried to revitalize the flames to cover his entire body again but he was one step behind. Swoosh! Without a single error, with unnatural grace, the Hell Horse and Weyong passed by each other. Afterwards, the two stood still. Thud! However, the first to collapse was the Hell Horse. While Weyong turned his body and looked at the Hell Horse, he removed his horns. The Hell Horse's flames completely died out. To the Hell Horse, it is his source of life. He couldn't aim for anything else, but his very life. The Hell Horse was too strong for him to be relaxed. However, it wasn't like there wasn't a way to heal him. Mwiyong turned his gaze. Brrrr. The unicorn that received Mwiyong's gaze shivered. Can you treat him? The unicorn was a magical beast that was considered the best among light types. Rather than calling it a monster, it was more fitting to call it a holy beast. There was also Bi Sungmin who had the powers of a saint, but still, he was lacking compared to a unicorn. However, the unicorn didn't move and just shivered her body. Will he? Will he he, husband? Leave it to will he? Her voice was filled with confidence. As if her turn had finally come, Will He E flew across to the unicorn. And after some dialogue, the unicorn moved as she showed her beauty. It was a surprise. Afterwards, the unicorn specifically approached the hell horse and smacked her lips to his cheek. Then, the unicorn's horn showed vivid light and started to revive the hell horse's flames. After that, things were being done swiftly. After about ten minutes later, the flames returned to their original state. Neeg? The hell horse blinked his eyes. He seemed like he didn't know what was going on. Then, he jumped up after looking at the unicorn right next to him. The unicorn turned her body but she wasn't cold to him like before. Blackie, Whitey saved you. You should be good to her. Understand. As Wahi furtively gave him advice, the hell horse's eyes sparkled. In other words, it meant that he still had a chance. Once again, he started to hit on the unicorn. Hell horse, 
I believe you will keep your promise. The hell horse looked at Mweung as he closed one of his eyes. Mweung wasn't the type to not know what that meant. It seemed like it was more important for him to win her over than the fight. Yuck. Well he grabbed her chest as if she wasn't feeling good by watching him. The hell horse kept his promise. He was quite trustworthy in that way. Not soon after, the devil's long night ended and at that same time, the castle's restoration was complete. A plus. Childbirth support. The losses were quite high. But, they should be able to increase the population with the right facilities, having no worries about food. Mweung built associating facilities and stationed people. He used a bit more strength towards the people's welfare. The Lord is working hard for our sake. Ah, uh, thank you. Indeed, he's our Um. Um has more wisdom than anyone else. A uh, Um. A uh, Um. It wasn't a big deal. But, everyone was moved and idolized Mweung even more. He just did it to increase the birth rate and strengthen the power of the territory. This sort of reaction wasn't expected. My little movements influence them greatly. It was a type of realization. And Mweung thought of the time before he returned to the past. Wang Chunglin removed Mweung's free will and just tried to rule over him. But, that suppression would eventually be broken. Mweung promised that he wouldn't follow that path. I'm different from you, Wang Chunglin. The leader of the Forest of Death. Just a bit more. It won't be long until the day I break your neck. Clinch. Mweung clenched his fist so hard that it could shatter into pieces. There was no way he would forget the things he went through while he was in the forest of death. He just tried hard not to think of it because he was busy moving forward. However, now the picture was slowly being drawn. Just a bit more. Only a few steps left. He wanted to run now and clench Wang Chunglin's neck in his hands but to make sure of his fall, Mweung needed to take a breath. That's right. The process of taking a breath. Since the devil's long night had ended, I probably need to act. Right away, Mweung made his next plan. There were things he needed to find first. Although Oris's throne is just an accessory, if I can find the Hamel's rune ring I can earn the Diablos. The Hamel's rune ring. The lunatic sovereign's ring and the Oris's throne ring, all that was left was that ring. If he could get the three rings, he could make an S-rank weapon. He wasn't sure of the exact rank but it could be an even greater weapon that could split skies and cleave the earth. Its splendors would definitely be thrilling. But, Hamel's rune ring isn't in the demon god's territory. Mweung rubbed his chin. That was the reason why Mweung was trying to find the Hamel's rune ring last. It wasn't in the demon god's territory, and he couldn't earn it from a trial. The next destination was not in the demon god's territory but another place. The Sun Guild. One of the nine guilds and the organization where Alexandro Quintart was the leader. He needed to break into that place and get the ring. He was unsure who would be wearing the ring. As the owner constantly changed. It was due to the division within the guild. The Sun Guild was the most turbulent guild and its strife has never ended. It was amazing that Alexandro Quintart continued to seize power even among those times but either way, if Mweung was to use their division and seize an opportunity, there might be a way. Mweung's heart raced even faster as it was a place which held many memories for Mweung in variety of different ways. Chapter 130, Sun Guild, 1. T.L., Nadu. Editor, Lee Suras. The Great City. The starting point for all survivors which was connected to the Blue Temple. People endured one month at the Blue Temple then came to this place to check their aptitude. It was also the place where people fell behind, were absorbed by different groups, clung to others, or died afterwards. It was a completely huge castle where hundreds of thousands of people could live together. That was the great city. That crazy bastard, he starts again today. Is he a mercenary or what? Why does he come here and do that? Tisk, tisk, I wonder what Luminescent Guild is doing. That Luminescent Mark is a waste. 
he's really tarnishing their reputation. In a corner of the great city, a dark place that was dug up like an underground cave, a man stood among the mercenaries. As the man appeared at that place, everyone clicked their tongues. The man who wore light plate armor, boots, etc. was Kim Ti Wan. He had the luminescent mark on his shoulder but the moment Kim Ti Wan appeared, he sat down in the middle of the mercenaries after bringing a sign and a chair. This place was the mercenaries market. It was a place where the mercenaries who couldn't find work, came to look for work personally. At that place, Kim Ti Wan crossed his arms and quietly closed his eyes. If you desperately need help, I will help you. All that was written on the sign was this. There was no one who didn't know of him as the message was automatically translated if you wore the status viewer. And the content itself was flawless. So, truly there were people who asked Kim Ti Wan for help in the beginning. Among them, a few were rejected by Ti Wan and the ones he accepted weren't much of a help. In other words, sloppy. To solve complex problems in the underworld, Ti Wan was short of experience. Only a year. Since it had not been long since he arrived in the underworld, everything couldn't be solved just because he was strong. However, Ti Wan was highly enthusiastic. At least, he didn't try to solve everything carelessly. So, he was oddly quite popular. Since there were a few requests even in a day. On the other hand, the mercenaries thought Ti Wan as a thorn on their side as he took away their jobs. The Luminescent Guild was one of the nine biggest guilds. Why would a new recruit of that great guild appear in the mercenaries market? He was probably known as a queer one even within the Luminescent Guild. Let's not be impatient. There isn't anyone within the guild who has high hopes for me. Then, I need to thoroughly develop from the bottom. Kim Ti Wan made a promise and stayed at his spot even today. With the size of the Luminescent Guild, they had many talented individuals. Ti Wan was definitely a new recruit who stood out but still, there weren't many people who had high hopes for him. It was because the existing vested interests were controlling everything. All they did was support to a point. Besides that, everything was fierce. They needed to develop on their own. Ti Wan was planning to go up from the bottom thoroughly. Who the hell is he? He's fully armed. That's how you die from suffocation. From the looks of him, he probably is a wanderer. Here at the underground, fashion victims die, child. The mockeries of the mercenaries unexpectedly filled the surrounding. The sound of keek, keek, which disturbed his ears was among them. Ti Wan furtively opened his eyes. At the same time, someone who was definitely not suited for this place called the underground, came within his sight, in the darkest, dampest, and dirtiest of places, the mercenaries' market, where the untouchables lived. Fully armored truly suited him. From the head to toe, the combination of equipment. Even if others used observation-type skills, they were unable to identify them. Muyong had used a talisman to hide his stats and information about his equipment. However, if someone was to be determined, it wasn't that hard to find it. They were hard to find formally but Muyong knew many mercenaries' unofficial routes in this underground area. Anyways, there weren't any mercenaries who came to the underground with that much armor. Thud. The man quietly leaned against the wall. As if he didn't care about the gaze of surrounding mercenaries. That sword is. But, Ti Wan's gaze reached the man's sword. For some reason, it was a sword he was familiar with. Its curve and form, he thought he saw it a lot somewhere. Ah. Uh -huh. After pondering for a while, Ti Wan was able to realize. Anguish, it was anguish. It was Muyong's sword. In the past, Ti Wan was with Muyong in the Blue Temple and Muyong had earned anguish after finding the Star of David and finishing the trial there. Ti Wan also earned the Shield of Eradication there. It's a bit different. However, he then was disappointed. The overall contour was similar but the detailed parts were different. Ti Wan had a good memory and things regarding Muyong were especially difficult to easily forget. There was no way for him to make a mistake. 
you can't last long like that. Then, Tiwan turned his attention away. Here, the underground was truly wild. If you drew attention, everyone attacked you together. It was also the reason why Tiwan purposely went lightly equipped. To survive, you needed to have a certain degree of blending in. However, the man showed no signs of it. He didn't seem like he knew anything about the physiology of the underground. If you stood out, there might be a lot of requests but you couldn't complete all the work without the help of other mercenaries. And if you were too greedy, they would kill you. In the end, they would give up on their own or would leave after being harassed by mercenaries. Either way, it was hard for it to end well. Ballet Guild has requested three swordsmanship and shieldsmanship instructors. They say you are a must. Will you go with me? Then a man who approached Tiwan from the side spoke to him. Tiwan nodded his head. Sure. The owner of the Ballet Guild had two sons. The two were now both at an age where they should slowly learn swordsmanship. Since it wasn't a hard thing to do, it wasn't a bad idea to repay the debt of a fellow mercenary. Tiwan heard that he was sloppy and made lots of mistakes but he was diligently making his own people. For change within the guild, he needed his own people and basically this place was the place where he could find people who could be his wingmen. Before leaving the underground, Tiwan once again looked at the man who was fully armored before he turned around. In any case, he wouldn't last long. A quarter of a day. After Tiwan finished his instructor duty at the ballet guild and returned to the underground, the man was still there leaning against the wall. However, the surrounding reactions were odd. He felt a few mercenaries who didn't want to approach the man. A strange silence and nervousness had settled. It was a mood that didn't make sense in the underground. Hey, did something happen? Tiwan asked a mercenary who was still at the underground. Then, the mercenary cautiously nodded his head. That son of a bitch, that bitch isn't human. Mercenaries. Among them, if they were an underground mercenary, they were well known as tough. Being called inhuman was like a compliment to each other. However, it seemed like the meaning behind the words that bitch isn't human said by this mercenary was slightly different than that. What the hell had happened here? Just a quarter of a day. Within a day, their understanding of him changed. He couldn't help but be curious and the mercenary just gulped his saliva. A corpse sorcerer. A corpse sorcerer. Yet. Yeah. That bastard deals with corpses. Ah. Uh -huh. Now he could understand why the mercenaries were so tensed up. There was clearly a bias towards corpse sorcerers in a bad way. All of the five clans were divided into the Lawless Clan, Beast Clan, Advanced Clan, Rain Clan, and Command Clan, but the only clan which was stated last had corpse sorcerers as their main members. And Command Clan's people were well known to be vicious. It was a place that dealt with corpses and to obtain a high-level corpse, they even ignored moral sense. Because their power was so great, no one touched them. This also was one of the rotten pus of the underworld. Then, he is a member of the command clan. Probably. Shit, why are these bastards who had a place at the front coming here one by one these days? The command clan was a group that wasn't located in the great city. They created a village and lived there which was a closed area about 50 days of travel by horse from the great city. But, these days, the corpse sorcerers were one by one coming out to the world. All, one by one, powerful people. It meant that that person was also the same case. It was an enough reason for even the mercenaries of the underground to avoid. So, a person had died. Tiwan nodded as he looked at the surrounding situation. Someone fucked with him and the scuffle resulted in the person dying. And the dead person started to move as a corpse. The lifeless figure that was currently moping around the man seemed to be the one revived as an undead. However, this place had a low sense of comradeship. Revenge? There was no way such a thing would happen. There was no one who would interrogate another even if someone died. These were the mercenaries of the underground. Even more. Since they found out that he was a corpse sorcerer, 
they would be busy trying to spare themselves. Maybe because the timing was wrong. Damn, I'll end it for today. The mercenary left his spot. Kim Ti-won had a good look at the man and rubbed his chin. A corpse sorcerer. There isn't anything good in meddling with him. It's even more so if he was a member of the command clan. The man would not be of help to his great cause. So, he decided not to be involved as much as he can. The next day. A man showed up at the underground. He was a young man with the Sun Guild mark on his shoulder. A new trial was created in the dungeon under Sun Guild's jurisdiction. To those who participate, we will give two C rank talismans. What sort of trial is it? As a mercenary asked, the man put on a sour face as he replied. I don't know much about it. It isn't dangerous. Since it's a trial in a low level dungeon. Let's just say it is an exploration to figure out if the trial is dangerous or not. A trial exploration. It was quite hit or miss. However, if it was a trial that occurred in a low-level dungeon, as he said, it was most likely for it to not be a big deal. Two C-rank talismans were enough goods for him to find three months' worth of food. For mercenaries who lived hand-to-mouth, it was a quite a tempting offer. Is there a limit on the number of applicants? No. That was all. All of the mercenaries in the underground participated. Aren't you a member of the Luminescent Guild? Then, the man from the Sun Guild asked Tiwan. Tiwan just smiled a little. Hmm, they say that there is someone odd in the Luminescent Guild, I guess you are that person. If you participate, I'll make an exception and give you two B-rank talismans. That's not necessary. Just give me what you offer to everyone else. You sure? That's not a bad deal for me. Tiwan lowered his head slightly. Afterwards, all the mercenaries of the underground moved and followed the man. The dungeon was big. The dungeon managed by the Sun Guild. There were one nine levels of the dungeon but this place was about level three. It might be easy to think that basically, monsters of orc level were going to appear. Only five people can go in the trial at once. Go in, in order. The middle of the dungeon. While the soldiers of the Sun Guild were protecting the trial, a huge wave of light flew out. And with no option, the soldiers grouped in fives and entered into the wave of light. What rotten luck! For me to be teamed with a corpse sorcerer of all people. From right beside Tiwan, he could hear sounds of dissatisfaction. It's best to not be involved but... Tiwan also let out a sigh inwardly. His decision to not get involved as much as he can was broken within just a few days.